Hi, I'm George Russell. I'm a body worker, movement specialist, and chiropractor from New York City. What I'm here to do today is to explain a little bit about the mechanics of the hip joint, the ball and socket mechanics of the hip joint, and to talk to you a little bit about how understanding how the ball and socket work will help you to work much more effectively as a massage therapist. I believe that the massage therapist is uniquely situated to help people with some of the major chronic problems that are appearing now in our culture, especially problems with the hip and shoulder. So I want to arm you with just what you need to be able to help people uh, when they have problems with their hips. I believe that most of the problems that we get in the hips, and indeed also in the shoulders, are caused by failures of glide, and I'll explain what that means. Let's pretend this is the ball and socket joint of your hip. Remember that if you're looking sideways at my body, the ball is here and then it goes out to the side to your greater trochanter, your outer hip bone, and then it angles back towards the knee. That allows for a lot more mobility of the leg so that you can move your legs into lots of different directions, <clears throat> which is great. And the hip joint has a tremendous amount of mobility as well as stability. <clears throat> but here's what happens in the actual mechanics in the joint. As you move and you use the big muscles, those ones you know from the gym, those ones you massage on people, the ball rolls out of the socket. So now at this point, you have to picture your legs going up in the air. The ball rolls out of the socket. If it doesn't, at the same time, glide back into the center of the joint, then the cartilage is not touching the cartilage, and the bone can touch the labrum, it can touch the ligaments, and you could even be bone on bone. And now we all know what that means, and that basically explains the problems that many, many people in their hips have that lead to arthritis, labral tears, uh, ligamentous sprains and strains, etc. As well as, of course, just plain old limitation of movement. So at the same time as in any direction you're rolling to move, let's say, your knee up in space, you have to be gliding back. And muscle balance, correct muscle balance, is going to help you to make that happen. At the same time, understanding how the joint works is going to be your first point of departure because range of motion work is in your skill set and it's in your practical uh, scope of practice. And so if you can learn how to do this, you're going to be much more value to your clients. Let's see how this plays out on a client. This is Jesse, and his hip joints, as you might know, are here. And the ball is located this way in the socket. It's angled out, the bone angles out this way, and then it goes back in towards his knee. When the body gets fixated and can't glide, then when you try to move your leg in a certain direction, you come up against a barrier. That barrier is usually the labrum. That's what it's designed for. But if you're coming up against it again and again because your joint is stuck and your muscles are imbalanced, that's what leads to a labral tear. It could, the labral tear could have come from a car accident, but the reason you got it was because you were fixated in the first place. Now, I'm going to assess his leg very simply in a way that you can learn to do at home just by watching this. I'm just going to circumduct his leg. Now, I'm not doing that traditional range of motion thing you might be thinking of, your grandmother's range of motion work, where I would try to push to the edges of his ability. I'm just taking him in a circle, and I'm feeling for areas that feel just a little sticky or funny. You'll feel them. It's like an elastic, kind of nasty feeling. And I feel that right through this area, and then again here. Almost all restrictions are towards the top and towards the inside. And that's because most of us tend to stand, to some extent, when we slouch in this way and that moves the bone forward and inward in the socket. So that I work a lot with professional dancers, and I've worked with a lot of ballerinas from major dance companies who cannot move their leg across the midline this far because they're getting stuck from standing like this on the subway when they leave the American Ballet Theater. Okay, so, and perhaps Jesse's in the American Ballet Theater, I don't know. So <clears throat> as I come up here, this is where I find the most restriction. Do you also feel a sense of restriction here? Yes, I do. It's like a rubbery, thick feeling, like pressing into a mattress or pressing into a box spring. I could push more, but it feels like, but you really don't want to. And the client will also sometimes experience pain. So here are a couple ways that you can very quickly, hey, let me do something first. You can also just check their internal and external range of motion here. That's a gliding motion, right? It's just gliding like this. And he's restricted in both directions quite a bit. Right? His internal range of motion is zero, and his external is perfectly fine for daily living but it's a little thick at the end. So no matter how far they go, if it's thick at the end, that means it's restricted. So I'm gonna take him into his most restricted place here, and there's several ways to do this. If you wanna drape the client appropriately and you have the right relationship with them, you can come up to the top of their thigh. The closer you are to the ball, the better you'll be, because remember, when his knee moves this way, 
the ball has to move the other way in the socket in order to stay in the center of the joint where cartilage touches cartilage and there's no stress on the labrum. Okay, so I'm gonna take him a little across and hold him there with my chest or my shoulder, and then I'm gonna pull back with my arms, keeping my elbows in and down to protect my own body. I don't have to pull really hard, and there isn't going to be a huge motion that happens. All I'm doing is mobilizing him in his gliding range of motion to get the ball away from the labrum in the edge of the socket so he'll be able to move more and with more ease. And I hang out till I feel a change. That could be 45 seconds. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. But usually you can make a change that the client will feel, especially if you've, if you've assessed it first, they'll have something to compare it with. Now, I'm gonna show you something else. He was very restricted in internal rotation. Basically, he had none. So why don't I take him into internal rotation and also take him into the direction where he was restricted, which was in between flexion and adduction. Now I can kill two birds with one stone. And I'm gonna continue here a little bit. If you want to add something, you can also push down in the long axis of the bone. So just down towards the ground as you pull. Okay, now I'm, let's say I'm done. The next thing I'm gonna do is the same thing. I'm not pushing to the end of his range, I'm just circling to feel where it's sticky. Now it's sticky here, which is what we didn't work on, and here. Now he has some internal rotation. Is it a lot? No, but it's more than he had before, and it feels a little freer. Let's check this angle. Does this feel any different than it felt before? It definitely feels better. It feels more open. Right. So sometimes you won't get a huge amount of range the first time you do it, but if they feel better, if it's not as sticky to you and they feel like it's freer, that's a home run. And I'm telling you, this is going to make a huge difference with a lot of people. I think one of the major keys to retaining youth is to retain hip mobility because people who can retain hip mobility can climb stairs, they can squat down to sit on a toilet seat. These are crucial things. And as our cohort ages, and the people who are getting massage age, these are things that should not be left to an MD who has no idea what to do, or to a PT that may not have the specialized manual acuity and dexterity that you have as a massage therapist. What you would do next would depend on your assessment of the muscles. But if you do this first, or if you assess muscles first, and then you do this and you go back, you'll find that those muscles are already looser because muscles move joints. So when you change joints, you change muscles, just the same way that when you change muscles, you change joints. So give this a try, it's pretty easy, and I think you'll have very good results.